Resolution, file sizes, TIFF, and JPEG compression. I'm going to talk about all of it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everybody, I'm David Bergman. Welcome back, as always, right here on Adorama TV. I'm here answering your photography questions. Hopefully you're already a subscriber. If you're not, make sure you click that button down below. You'll get all the latest and greatest free photo content from myself and other photo hosts right here on Adorama TV. Also go to AskDavidBergman.com, ask me a photo question. I just might answer it on a future show and check out my availability for one-on-one -on -one photo consultations. All right, this week's question is from Joshua K. and he asked, does a smaller file size mean the image has less resolution? What's the best compression level to use when saving a JPEG? And should I be saving TIFF files instead? Now, last week's video was about image resolution. And this is a great question because lots of people equate resolution with the size of the file on their hard drive. Now, while resolution and image size are related, a smaller file doesn't necessarily mean that it's a lower resolution. When we talk about file size, we're only referring to how much space a single image takes up on your hard drive. Now, JPEG is the most common image format and those files end with JPEG. JPG or JPEG, so you can tell that those are your image files. Now, before we get any deeper into this, I've always recommended you shoot in RAW mode on your digital camera. That's how you're going to get the most quality and flexibility from your images. When I talk about file formats here, I'm referring to the files you save out of your RAW converter after you've worked on it, like Lightroom, Capture One, or even the Photos app on the Mac. Now, you can shoot JPEGs directly from your camera, but it's not going to give you as much latitude to work on your images in the computer. I'm going to link to a, to a video video I did about shooting raw down below so you can check that out. All right, back to JPEG. Now, JPEG is what we call a compressed file format. It's a bit of an oversimplification to say, but what it does is it records groups of colors. So it's almost like describing something using fewer words, like a, like a shorthand, right? So when you're saving your file out as a JPEG, you can pick the level of compression you want. In Photoshop, you can choose from 1 to 12, and usually it's 1 to 10 or 1 to 12. The more compression you use, which is the lower numbers, that's going to be a smaller file size. But that also comes with a loss of some quality because it's basically describing in fewer words, right? So the more words you get, the more detail you're going to have. Now, the easiest way to see the file size on a Mac is either to look at the file in list view or to select the image and hit command I for get info. Now, I'm not a PC guy, but I think you can right click and check properties or use Windows Explorer to get that same information. Now images can be really small. They could be just a few kilobytes or they could be hundreds of megabytes or even a gigabyte or more, although those are very rare. So why does any of this matter? Well, when you're storing hundreds or thousands of files, it can take up a lot of hard drive space. So you might want to keep those file sizes down for your own storage needs. You also might have had a situation where a client or a photo lab asks you to deliver a JPEG that's under a certain size. Really, they want it smaller because it's going to transmit faster and it's going to help their storage much more than it's going to affect your resolution. So here's the thing. The size of that JPEG is not necessarily equivalent to resolution. As I said in last week's video, the resolution of your image is dictated only by the number of pixels in the image. But since you can shorten the description of those pixels down, you can create file sizes of very different sizes despite having the same resolution. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go into Photoshop here and I'm going to pull up an image I shot recently. Now, um, there's a lot of detail in this image. There's a lot of stuff going on. We can save this out as a JPEG to compress it. So first let's look at the resolution. Let's go under image size and you can see this is a 6,000 by 4,000 pixel image, right? So when we save that out, I'm going to go ahead and save this to a folder called JPEG so we can keep track of these. And I'm also going to append at the end of this, I'm going to compress this at level six. So I'm going to rename it with a six just so I know which file is which. We're going to change this over to JPEG, save, and we're going to save this at six. This is our key right here, right? We're going to save at a six compression. Let's save that out. Now at the same time, I'm also going to save another version and I'm going to change this to a 12 compression. That is the maximum compression right here. You can see I'm at 12. All right, so let's save that out. And when we go and look at the sizes in our finder, the six image is 2.4 megabytes, while the 12 is 13. 0.5 megabyte. that megabytes, that's a pretty big difference. That's about five times the size. Now, it also does depend on the content of the image. If you have a lot of detail and different colors and things going on, your file's going to be bigger because, again, that shorthand needs information. The information is data, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to take more time, more data to describe that file. Let's pull up, just to show that, a blank white image here. Now, the image size, we're gonna, I'm going to show, it is also 6,000 by 4,000, just the same as the other one. Let's save this now out as a six 
uh, compression into our JPEG folder right there. And we're gonna go over to JPEG, save as six. And then we're also going to save another one as 12, name it 12 and change our compression to 12. And now when we go into our finder, you can see that those images are very different file sizes, right? The six is 438 kilobytes. That's about a fifth the size of the six from the volleyball image. And the 12 is 1.6 megabytes, which again is much, much smaller than that, that volleyball image. For the blank white frame, it's 4,000 by 6,000, but it's gonna be much, much smaller. So we, we have four different files here that are the exact same resolution, 4,000 by 6,000 pixels, but they are very vastly different file sizes. Now, what level of compression is best? Here's the thing, the low numbers are gonna be the smallest files, but for my taste, there's too much loss in quality when you compress it, one, two, or three, something like that. Level 12 is very, very high quality, but it's also a very big file. Personally, I find eight is the sweet spot where I can't really see a difference between eight and 12, but it's a smaller file for storage purposes. Now, if you really need all of the highest quality data in a file, after you've edited your raw, then you can save it out as a TIFF file, T-I-F-F. -F. TIFF is an uncompressed format, unlike JPEG. What it does is instead of using a shorthand, it records pixel by pixel. So just like, you know, the JPEG will, will use that shorthand, but what it does is it writes everything out basically word for word. It records the color of every single pixel individually. So let's go back into our images here. And first let's pull up the volleyball frame. And I'm gonna save that out now in a different folder just to keep these organized. Let's save this as a TIFF. We're gonna save it in our TIFF folder. We can take off our compression number there. And we're gonna save that out as a TIFF. And then uh, you can see when we look at that one, it is 72 megabytes. That's pretty massive, right? But remember, it's recording basically pixel by pixel. So it's gonna be a lot bigger than just JPEG, which says, oh, there are white pixels here in all these places. And it's a lot simpler to describe, but there is some loss. This is gonna be pixel by pixel. Now, the complexity of the image doesn't matter because it's doing pixel by pixel. So it's recording every single one. If we go back to our white frame here and we save that out as a TIFF file, let's bring it into our TIFF folder. We're gonna get rid of that compression. We're gonna change this to TIFF and we're gonna save that one out. Guess what? When we look at that, it is also 72 megabytes. It's exactly the same size as our volleyball picture. It doesn't matter what is in the image, it's gonna be the exact same. A 4,000 by 6,000 uh, pixel image is always gonna be 72 megabytes. Now, fewer pixels, if you have fewer pixels in the image than 4,000 by 6,000, it's gonna be a smaller size. And if you have more, it's gonna be bigger. So in this case with TIFF, it does correlate directly with how big the file is. Now, there are a few exceptions. There are things that can change the size of a TIFF file without changing the resolution. For example, if you use 16-bit instead of 8-bit, that's more color information, so it's gonna be more data. If you're using a Photoshop file and saving as a TIFF and you have layers, um, that's gonna be bigger. And also, there are different types of TIFF compression, but I don't know if too many people who use that, but it, it does exist. But in general, when you, you wanna use TIFFs only really when you need to save the most amount of data without any loss in quality. Personally, I usually only save out my TIFFs when it's my best portfolio images and I've spent a lot of time working on them and toning them exactly how I want. And I might store those in the cloud for safekeeping. Um, I can always make another version of the original RAW, but it's nice to have those ready to go just in case I need a particular high quality file for making a large print or for something like a, you know, a large print or an album cover. So to answer Joshua's questions, uh, make sure I got them all. A small file size does not necessarily mean less resolution. I showed that a 72 megabyte TIFF and a 2.4 megabyte JPEG are both exactly 4,000 by 6,000 pixels, which is 24 megapixels. Uh, the best compression for JPEG, as I said, I think eight's the best way to go, but your mileage may vary depending on your particular uses. usage. And should you be saving TIFFs instead? I personally don't recommend it for everyday use. Only in rare cases, maybe should you even bother saving TIFFs, especially if you're shooting raw, since you can, of course, always export a new TIFF when you need it. So, Joshua, thanks so much for asking that question. Remember, ask your own photo questions at askdavidbergman.com. There's a form there. Check out my one-on-one -on -one consultations, whether it's creative or technical or business question. I've probably dealt with it over my career and can help you out. And lastly, of course, subscribe here to Adorama TV. There's a new Ask David Bergman every Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern. I hope to see you back here next week on Ask David Bergman.